Welcome everyone to my Indianapolis Colts franchise here for Madden 19. I am so excited to get into this. The reason that I picked the Colts is because they are a young team that has just simply struggled over the last three years, ever since that AFC Championship game against the Patriots, where that season the Colts went 11 and 5. It just went downhill from there. They then went 8 and 8, 8 and 8, and 4 and 12 last season. So this team trending in the wrong direction. We step in here and look to right the ship. So let's take a look at this roster. What will we be dealing with? So you can see there, T.Y. Hilton is the best player overall on our roster, but the guy more important than him is Andrew Luck. When Andrew Luck is playing, the Colts are 43 and 26, but the problem is that he hasn't been playing because of injury, but he returns this season, and hopefully he is just going to be one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. We have one of the best backup quarterbacks in the league in Jacoby Brissett. They traded for him last season from the New England Patriots, and Brad Kaya is injured, so he will stick on the roster, but will most likely be cut. Marlon Mack last year was a rookie. He's a 2017 fourth-round pick. He had 3.8 average yards on 93 carries last season. Hopefully he can improve on that. Naheem Hines, a 2018 fourth-round pick, and Jordan Wilkins, a 2018 fifth round pick both those guys are going to contribute in different ways Hines is kind of like a Darren Sproles and Wilkins is like a power back so hopefully we can develop them nicely into the roster two nice young guys Christine Michael and Josh Ferguson both have low ceilings so we will most likely cut them at the end of the season or we'll just not give them a contract Ryan Hewitt is going to be our starting fullback we can definitely improve there for next season T.Y. Hilton is one of the best wide receivers in the NFL from 2013 to 2016 he had four 1,000 yard seasons and he only had 57 catches last year, which is why that didn't extend to last year. So hopefully we can just get him going and just let him do what he does. Ryan Grant and Chester Rogers, both guys, they don't they have relatively low ceilings as well. We'll see what they can do this season, and they definitely need to prove that they earn a roster spot for this team in the future. Deion Kane was a 2018 sixth round pick, but he did tear his ACL in preseason, so that's not looking good for him there. Marcus Johnson, Zach Paschal, and Matt Hazel, all three guys just really low ceilings and they will most likely be cut players or be practice squad type guys next up here is jack doyle last year jack doyle led the team uh, with 80 catches and he is a very solid tight end the colts also got eric ebron from the detroit lions from last year and ebron looking to turn his career around it was trending in the right direction but he just dropped off a little bit Rosh Travis was going to be our third string tight end, but he is injured, so Eric Swoop will step in there for the season, and Luke Rhodes will be our long snapper, so we'll carry him there at the tight end position, and now let's take a look at left tackle. So we have the 2011 first round pick, Anthony Costanzo. He's a very solid left tackle, but unfortunately he is 30 years old, and we will eventually have to uh, find a replacement for him in this franchise. LaRaven Clark is a 2016 third round pick, and he will be the backup there. And look at this right here. One of the best offensive linemen already in the NFL. Rookie Quinton Nelson out of Notre Dame, 2018 first round pick. And we need to build the team around this guy. There's also Mark Lewinsky there at the backup position. Ryan Kelly is a 2016 first round pick. So we have three first round picks on that left side of the line. Although uh, it's been Kelly that struggled the most out of the three of them and will probably continue to struggle the most as Braden Smith there will get the start. He is a 2018 second round pick and Matt Slauson there, the veteran, will back him up at the right guard position. Denzel Good, Joe Haig, and Webb. I don't even know what his name is. Uh, all three of these guys are not very good players. As you can take a look, they're overall 69, 68, and 66. Jamarcus Webb, that is. And we will definitely need to find a right tackle uh, for the future. Now let's take a look at the defensive side of the ball. Terrell Basham, a 2017 third round pick. He's been a little bit disappointing last season. Hopefully he can turn things around here. And he did fight uh, to get a roster spot, so he did earn it. And we'll see what he can do. But the starter will be Kamiko Turi, the uh, 2018 second round pick. And uh, the rookie, and let's see what he can do. Uh, McCain, Calvin, and Johnson, all three guys, again, just they're just guys that you cut or put on the practice squad. Low ceiling type of players and they will probably not be on the team by next season. Jabal Sheard led the Colts in sacks last year with five and a half. Hopefully he can do that again, but get even more. And that's not a high number at all. Hopefully he can step up his game as well. 88 overall, that's pretty nice there for us. Marcus Hunt will be the backup at 31 years of age and 75 overall. Tyquan Lewis, a 2018 second round pick there. Uh, hopefully he'll develop into that spot nicely to the point where maybe we could trade away Jabal Sheard. Uh, Mohammed there, we will probably not keep on the team for next season. Al Woods is a very solid nose tackle, but he is 31 years of age. So another guy that we might need to trade here in the near future. Danico Autry and Hassan Ridgeway could potentially grow into a second... Uh, second defensive tackle there on our defensive line. Maybe even Grover Stewart as well. Ridgeway and Stewart 
are relatively young guys. Ridgeway is a 2016 fourth, and Stewart is a 2017 fourth. So now here at the linebacking position, we are, where we are very weak, Najee Good from the Philadelphia Eagles, and Matthew Adams, who was a 2018 seventh round pick. Now at middle linebacker, Anthony Walker Jr., who was a 2017 fifth. Behind him will be Sky Moore, who was an undrafted guy that we brought on this team. He is a rookie this season. And then behind him is Zaire Franklin, and he is a 2018 seventh round pick. So a lot of these backup linebackers are just not really good. And again, low ceiling guys that we will probably cut. Here we go. 2018 second round pick Darius Leonard, extremely athletic, like a Telvin Smith all over the field. He can play. And behind him is Jeremiah George. Again, another low ceiling guy that we might cut. Pierre Desir, 27 years of age, 73 overall. Quincy Wilson, 22 years of age, 72 overall. Nate Harrison, 24 years of age, 72 overall. Uh, Kenny Moore, 23 years of age and 72 overall. And then Chris Milton, 25 years of age and 66 overall. We do not have good corners at all, and we definitely need to either trade, sign, or draft a corner to definitely improve this team. I mean, we're, we're really lacking in this category. We do have some young guys there with Wilson and Harrison, but man, it's not looking good. Corey Moore from the Texans. He will be the backup behind Malik Hooker, who was the 2017 first round pick for this team. Hooker, we need him to develop nicely. He did tear his ACL last season, and hopefully he recovers this season. Clayton Gathers, a 2015 fourth round pick. Uh, he will play alongside Matthias Far Farley, who both of them will probably split time for that starting position and may even play the sub linebacker role in our package. Is George Odom, another guy that we just might cut uh, here at the end of the season or just not offer him a contract because of his low ceiling. Adam Vinatieri, the legend, won a couple Super Bowls there with the Patriots. And we have him on the team, super clutch, very old. We definitely need to find a, find a replacement for him. Rigoberto Sanchez will be our starting punter. And now let's take a look at our practice squad. Really nothing special here. Carol Phillips, DJ White at corner. Maybe we need him to grow for our cornerback position. Reese Fountaine was a pick this year in the 2018 draft. Jihad Ward, Steve Ismal. Uh, I don't know a lot of these guys. Jamil Douglas and Jeremy McNichols. So... Our practice squad not looking that great either. We're definitely going to have to add some pieces uh, to this practice squad, which will be coming up a little bit later in this episode. But first, let's take a look at the schedule. So week one, we'll be playing the Bengals at home. Week two, we will be at the Redskins. Week three, we will be at the Philadelphia Eagles, the defending Super Bowl champions. Week four versus the, the, our division rival Texans. Week five at the New England Patriots. That's going to be rough. Week six at the Jets. Week seven versus the Bills. So there's that AFC East slate. Week 8 at the Raiders, and then Week 9 will be our bye week. Week 10 we versus the Jaguars. Week 11 versus the Titans. Week 12 versus the Dolphins. Week 13 versus the Jaguars. Week 14 versus the Texans. So there in five weeks, we'll be playing four divisional matchups. That's pretty big. Week 15 versus the Cowboys. Week 16 versus the Giants. And Week six, or 17, we will be at the Tennessee Titans to round out our season. So overall, it's it should be a pretty good schedule. I mean... If, if we do perform well, but we are not that great of a team, so maybe we will lose against some of these worst teams. But in the end, we do get high draft picks from that. Anyway, let's take a look at our division. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars last year got eliminated by the New England Patriots in the AFC Championship game. They are led by their defense, Saxonville. You got, I, I, there's just too many players to name. Calias Campbell, Malik Jackson, uh, Miles Jack. Uh, oh my gosh, how am I forgetting Jalen Ramsey? I mean, the best corner in the league, possibly one of the best players in the league. And then there's also the Tennessee Titans, who were eliminated by the Patriots in the divisional round. They are led by Marcus Mariota, pretty solid offensive line. Derrick Henry, Deion Lewis. They also got Malcolm Butler from the Patriots alongside Deion Lewis. And then to take a look at the Texans, they are just star-studded to Sean Watson, DeAndre Hopkins, J.J. Watt, and they added Tyron Matthew from the Arizona Cardinals. So our entire division should be very, very rough. One of the hardest in the league to grow in. And th this is going to be very, very challenging over the next three seasons or however so long I want to make this series. So now here looking in free agency, looking to fill our practice squad. We're going to be looking at uh, Katie Cannon. He has 93 speed, 80 catching. So I'm like, hey, that's a pretty good combination of hands and feet. So we're definitely going to sign this guy to our practice squad. Uh, no harm done, of course. We're not giving him any kind of money. He is 22 years of age out of Baylor, and hopefully he can grow there and possibly challenge for a roster spot for the next season. Next up, left outside linebacker, Dayan Pratt. Uh, 78 tackle. He has pretty good power moves there. Uh, pretty good break tackle, but 
He is 64 overall, so he will also be going to our practice squad here. Again, no harm done. We're not giving him any kind of money. We can just release him at the end of the season, but we would like him to grow and possibly help out our uh, very, very weak linebacking core. I mean, we have undrafted guys there. We have seventh round picks and just overall not that great of players. And then I almost passed up here on Amara Darbo. I passed right by him because I thought another team would claim him, but no one did. So he has 91 speed, 82 catching. He came from the Seattle Seahawks and specifically came from the College of Michigan. And he was a deep threat there at Michigan uh, with uh, Wilton Spate, I believe, a quarterback. And yeah, Darbo is a deep threat, and we do want to add him to the team. So he, he could potentially crack the roster this year. And after changing my mind a little bit on a series of things, we will actually be signing Amara Darbo to the main roster. He will not be on the practice squad just because of how good he is. He's 6'2", decent speed, uh, decent catching. He's just a decent, decent player. So in return, we will be sending down Zach Paschal, who is not a very great uh, runner or receiver. We will be moving him to the practice squad, 64 overall for him, and maybe he could grow. I don't know, but let's take a look at the starting lineups for this franchise. So to start off with our staff, we have Jim Ursay at owner, Chris Ballard as our GM, and the fourth Reich, ladies and gentlemen, Frank Reich, the offensive coordinator from the Philadelphia Eagles. This is his first season as a head coach in the NFL, and he is here with us, the Indianapolis Colts. At quarterback, we have the legendary Andrew Luck, who will just shred through defenses this season. And at backs and receivers, we have Marlon Mack as our starting halfback, Naheem Hines as our third down back or receiving back, T.Y. Hilton at wide receiver, Jack Doyle at tight end, and Eric Ebron at tight end. So these two tight end sets where we can line up Mack and Naheem Hines in the backfield, it is going to be all good. Had it set up a play action fake, throw it to T.Y. Hilton. Oh my God, I can already picture it. Now let's take a look at the offensive line. First round pick, Anthony Costanzo at left tackle. First round pick, Quentin Nelson at left guard. First round pick, Ryan Kelly at center. Then Braden Smith, a second round pick at right guard. And then Denzel Good will be the weak link on the offensive line, but right tackle, that is not the end of the world. At least it's not center or left tackle. And it, we can definitely live with that for maybe one season, but that is going to be our starting offensive line. Now on the defensive line, Jabal Sheard, one of the team leaders in terms of overall talent. And also on the other side of the field, we have Kamiko Ture, the rookie, coming off the edge, bringing some heat. Al Woods up the middle, an absolute grizzly bear of a human being. He will be shutting down the run game by just leaning to the right or left. And Nico Autry will be beside him at defensive tackle. Now for our linebackers, Darius Leonard, you will see fly all over the field. He will make tackles everywhere, interceptions. He does everything. Anthony Walker Jr. at middle linebacker and Najee Good at left outside linebacker. The two of those guys have got to step up their game if they want to stay on this team. Now in the secondary, Quincy Wilson, Kenny Moore the second, and Pierre Desir will be the three starting cornerbacks with Desir being the most talented, but he will be playing in the slot because that is where he is best suited. And then at free safety, Malik Hooker, an elite prospect for this team. I'm looking for him to step up big time this season. And he was having a nice season last year until he had the ACL injury, so hopefully he just returns and does the same thing. Matthias Farley will be at the strong safety position, but now for special teams, Anna Vinatieri at the kicker position, Rigoberto Sanchez at the punter position, and Luke Rhodes will be the long snapper. So... That is going to be it for the starting lineups. I am so excited to get into this series. Week one will be against the Cincinnati Bengals. And let's rebuild this Colts team to be a championship team for years to come. A perennial powerhouse. Overthrow the New England Patriots and win a Super Bowl. Comment, subscribe, your veggies. Go to school. Dan Carr Films out. Peace.